Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmar again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue the script animations and in the previous session I show you how to do a fade. I'm going to show you what we actually did. And then in this session I want to extend it and do a movement animation. So right now if I click on it, it basically fades in the settings window. If I click on the X, it fades out. So what I want to do is instead of doing a fade, I want, I want to do a transition and I also want to control the duration of the transition. So let's jump into coding and, and do some of that. So I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and there's a couple of things that I want to, that I need to do here. I need to add a new enum and then this enum is basically going to determine what the type of the animation is going to be. So I'm just going to call it enum type. We're going to add a couple of different enums. So I'm going to say none just for cases where I don't want to apply any animation. I'm going to do fade and I'll, I'm also going to do movement. Excellent. The, the other thing that I want to do is I also need to store that. I need to be able to, you know, determine where that's going to be set. So I'm going to do a private and then animation type and then animation type. Perfect. And then by default, I'm just going to set it to animation type that none. Excellent. And I also want to be able to set it through the inspector. So I'm just going to add my attribute for serialized field so that we can set it. The other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to determine the animation, the from, basically the, the location where the animation is going to start and when is it going to finish. So I need to declare a couple of variables for that. So I'm going to do a private vector3, move from, and move to. And then I'm going to initialize those two to zero, vector three, zero. And I'm also going to expose it. So I'm just going to say serializable field. Excellent. And let me just scroll down a little bit. And then the next thing that I'm going to need is just like I did on the, on the fade, I needed a value to store the fade transition. And then I'm going to need the same thing for the, for the location of the window. So for that, I'm going to basically do another variable, and it's going to be vector3, move value, and I'm also going to start it at vector0. Excellent. So that's basically all the variables that I'm going to need in the UI component. So now we're going to need another type of transition, which is going to be similar to what we did here. So I'm just going to copy the fade in, and we're just going to make a few changes to it. I want to basically call this one move. And I'm going to have an argument called, it's going to be a Boolean, and it's going to determine whether I'm going to move in or going to move out. So moving in, meaning, meaning I'm going from a location and then to a, from a location to a target location. And then if this is set to false, it's going to go from the current location to the original location. Excellent. So some of the other things that we're going to need to do is we're going to need, so I'm going to change a lot of this. And I'm also going to change the argument on the while loop. And I'm just going to say this is always going to be true because we're going to keep looping. The, the other thing that I want to do is I want to set the canvas alpha to 1 because there's not going to be an alpha transition. It's just going to basically be visible as soon as we start the transition. The other thing that I'm going to need is I'm also going to need a lerp. And it's going to be exactly what we did before. It's going to be delta time and then divide it by, instead of move duration, we're going to have to do, uh, actually, yeah, we're going to need a move duration. So we're going to need private. And then also, uh, this is basically going to be just like what we did before, a float, move duration. And we're going to start it at 0. And I'm also going to serialize this. Excellent. I'm actually going to move this. Let's actually move it up. So that we have our move duration. So we're going to have our animation type, then our move duration, how long we want that move movement to happen for in seconds, and then the location from and the location to. So those are going to be some of the settings that we'll have through the inspector. So we're going to divide these by the move duration. Excellent. And then we're also going to need to calculate the move value, which is also actually going to be our vector 3. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check to see if moving is set. So I'm going to do a ternary operator. 
and I'm going to use my vector3. Instead of using the math.lerp, we're going to use vector3lerp. And then we're basically going to say move from, comma, move to, and or lerp value. And then if moving is set to false, we're going to do the similar thing, except we're going to go to the other direction. And it's going to swap these ones, because it's going to be from the target to the source. Excellent. And let's just format this here. OK, excellent. So now the next thing that we need to do is we're going to need an, a reg transform. So if I go back into Unity, all the UI elements have a reg trans transform, which determines the anchor position, the x and y and z values, the width and the height. So we're going to basically have to get that component. So we're going to need another variable here to store that. So I'm going to say private reg transform. And then right transform, transform, perfect. And we're basically just going to get it from the initially initialize method. We're going to say go, get component, right transform, and then that, that's going to give us a right transform. So we're going to have to say right transform anchor position 3D equal move value. Excellent. So this is basically an anchor. It, it saves the anchor position in 3D. So because we're calculating everything in vector 3, which is x, y, and z, we're going to be setting the anchor position 3D. So if we do this like this, it's basically going to keep animating and it's never going to end. So we need to do one more thing to end this loop. So I want to check the vector 3 distance. And I want to know the distance between the target position and then my rec transform transform that anchor position 3D. And if that is less than 1.0, meaning that I'm really close to it, then we're going to end the loop. So I'm just going to say break so that we don't keep animating and, and basically have an infinite loop. So just to reiterate, we're calculating the, we're setting a, a variable for the lerp. We're setting the canvas alpha to one. We have a while loop, so we keep basically animating, incrementing the lerp. And then we calculate the lerp by using the time delta divided by the move duration. Then we calculate the move value, which we use the vector lerp to do an interpolation from the move location, the basically the source location to the target location, and then we pass in the lerp. If we're moving in, we're going to calculate this. If we're moving out, we're going to calculate in the opposite direction. And direction. And then if we are really close to the, basically to the target position, we're going to end the loop. Excellent. So that's, that basically wraps up the, the UI component. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to go into our window. And I need to change a couple of things in here because all we're doing right now, it's doing a fade in. So what I'm going to be doing here is I need to do something else. So instead of always doing a fade in, I'm going to check the animation type. So we're going to say if animation type, and it looks like I didn't set the variable to protect it so that I can access it from the child. So if we go back into animation type, I need to set that to protect it. Perfect. And let me make sure that my enumerator is public and it is so if we don't set it to protect it we're not going to be able to check what the animation type is on my on the parent which is the base class so by setting this to protect it now i should be able to access it from from the open method on the on the child class that inherits from ui component so i'm going to say animation type equal equal and we're going to check animation type that fade so if the animation type is set to fade, we're going to do our fade animation. Otherwise, we're going to do our movement animation. Excellent. And we need to change this from fade in to move. And remember that we had a moving variable. So I'm going to basically just add, a, add the parameter so that you see what I'm doing here. So if we're opening the window, we want to move in. So I'm going to set this one to true. And I'm going to basically just copy everything that I did here and then paste it in the close, except that we're going to do a fade out here and we're going to move out. So I'm going to set the moving to false. 
Excellent, and let me uh, space in here. So just to recap, if we're opening the window and we're fading in, we are going to do the fading transi transition. And if we're doing animation type of movement, we're basically gonna do a moving transition. The same thing with the close, except we're gonna fade out and be we're basically gonna move on the op opposite direction. So let me just check everything, make sure that everything is good. And looks like everything is good. So now if we go back into Unity, we can check the animations. So let's actually go into settings window. And then you can see that I have different settings now. So on the animation type, I can set it back to fade. And I have the fade direction of, of three seconds. So if we hit play, and we let Unity load, and I click on the settings button, you can see that I'm fading in and fading out. So that still works. So what if we wanted to do a movement instead? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna check, change this to movement. And I'm going to use the positions that I have right here to determine how far I wanna go. So let me actually bring my scene view and we're gonna do, let's bring it in closer, excellent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the position of the window setting, the window title. So if I go, if I go off right about there, we can say negative, I think negative 1000 and negative 800 should be fine. So if we go back to the, if we go to move from and I set it to negative 1000 and we can say negative 800 on the Y and the same thing, I still want to, I want to keep it at Y negative 800, but I want to move to zero because that's basically my target location. So if we hit play, and the other thing that I need to do that I didn't do, I need to change the, the setting on the move duration. So let's set it to three seconds as well. And then we can hit play, and we can see what happens. So if I click on settings, you can see that the window is moving in, and if I click on the X, it's basically gonna move out. So that's working great. So now if I change the setting in real time, let's say that I wanted to do it faster. Let's say 0.5. Uh, I click on my settings, it's actually showing much faster. So if we wanna go if we wanna go 0.1, so we can see that a lot faster. We can see that it snaps in and it's not, it snaps out. So this will be helpful if you wanted to do like a side menu where when you click on the on the hamburger menu, it basically moves in and then when you click on the X, it moves out. So this is working just fine. So with this, I leave you with basically functionality to do an animation type of movement, also a fade animation. So if you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. I'm also gonna be checking this code in so that you have it available in GitHub. And don't forget to share this video and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you.